channel. My name is Minnie Crumbler. Today I want to talk to you about how to make friends when you have Tourette's. And I, on the first hand, know exactly how hard it is to make friends when you have Tourette's syndrome. Um, even if you don't have Tourette's syndrome, it's really hard to find genuine, real, good friends that will stick by your side, ride or die. And it's really hard to come by people like that because Tourette's is, first of all, a, a condition that not a lot of people understand. And if they do know about it, they don't. They've never met anyone with Tourette's before, so they don't how to. They don't know how to handle your disability. And you oftentimes meet really rude people or people who really don't understand how your Tourette's or brain works, and they need to get used to you and understand your unique brain. And yeah, it's friends. I understand how friends are really hard to come by, and it's really hard to even get yourself out there to meet people to even find a good friend because it's like a it's like a crapshoot. I want to explain to you that finding friends is sort of like dating. And if you've never been on a date before, let me explain to you why. The reason why is usually when you go on a date, your, your main goal is to score a second date. To have fun, to be yourself, and to score a second date with the person that you're meeting up with. Meeting friends is sort of the same thing. <laughs> meeting friends is the same thing because you're trying to score a second date with them to hang out. Tourette syndrome is sort of like an undisciplined child because it's constantly testing boundaries and seeing how far you can get without getting in trouble. Like that's what an undisciplined child is. They they test their parents' boundaries and see how far they can get without getting in trouble. Tourette's is sort of like the same way because when you meet someone the first time, your Tourette's is trying to see if they'd understand you or not if they really accept you for who you are. Not, not that you're trying to do it on purpose, obviously, but it's just how the, the Tourette's mind works. It's like the first day that you meet someone, your tics are at its worst. And, and your tics are so bad when you meet from someone for the first time because you're anxious, you're nervous, and stress. And usually stress and anxious and nervousness um, causes Tourette's to be worse, if you don't know that already. Um, like imbalanced emotions, stressors, anxiety. And I'd say the only thing about Tourette's and, and meeting new people and meeting new friends is sort of like dating, but at the same time, it's the opposite. Because when you're first dating someone, you put on this facade, right? You put on this facade, you put on this image that you're, you, you can be the perfect candidate for that person. And, and, um, Sorry, there's a light there. <laughs> you can be that perfect candidate for the person and you put on this facade. But with Tourette's, you can't do that because you're gonna, it's pretty obvious that you're gonna tick when you're nervous around them. An example of when I make friends is when I first moved to this town called Kirkland and I found friends on this Facebook page group called Kirkland Ladies Group where it's like a bunch of women who live in Kirkland. And I met this one gal who, on on Facebook. I talked to her on, I talked to her on Facebook first. And <laughs> um and she seemed pretty chill, you know, she likes to do art like I do and she likes video games and she's into anime and kawaii things, which means cute in Japanese. We met in person. And I was so nervous that I was taking so much. Like when we were eating at this cafe in Redmond, I I had tics where I slammed the table and I was I was spitting my food out of my mouth and <laughs> I was spitting food out of my mouth and I actually spilled water on her phone. But the good thing is she had a phone case, um, so it was me testing the boundaries in a way where I was. I was seeing if she was accepting enough or if she was understanding enough and um, not putting on a facade, just being myself, just having tics as usual. And it's it's like uh, she was very kind um, and she was understanding. Now keep in mind that I don't have many friends. I only have one best friend and these friends that I'm mentioning are people who aren't my friends anymore because they I don't know, people People come and go. and um, But this is an example, a prime example of what it's like to be on a first date with a friend. So she was very understanding, accepting, and I was scored a second date with her, which means I got to hang out with her again. 
And another example is when, oh, this is an awesome example. I have, a, I had a friend named Marshall. We would, we would go out to eat. We went out to eat to this Chinese restaurant. And when we, when we ate, I kept banging my fist on the table and the tea fell over, the hot freaking tea fell over and it went all over his pants. That was embarrassing. So we decided to eat at the, to take it to go and eat at the food court instead near the mall. And, ah, and when I was eating in front of him, I had spitting ticks where I spat on his face with, while chewing my food. And that was, oh my goodness, so embarrassing because and first of all, it's rude, it's disrespectful, even though I didn't do it on purpose, it's just a sign of disrespect and, and it's gross, you know. And he was grossed out, obviously, because I'm sure no one spat on his, on his face before. And the worst part was that I eventually spat on his food and he looked at me, he looked at his food and he's like, okay, I'm gonna throw this away. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry. And I felt so bad, but <laughs> but that didn't stop him from hanging out with me the second time. I I totally apologized and I felt so bad that that day after the day of the day of I felt so bad that I cried in bed and I felt so embarrassed. But he was he was very nice and he's very understanding. But we probably never ate out in public anymore because of that tick. And I told him that we can just eat at home where it's more comfortable. My social life has been pretty easy. Like I, I, I'm a social butterfly, so it's never been hard for me to go out there and meet new people. And I feel like there are times in the past where I wasn't a good friend myself. I would, I don't have the right etiquettes to be a good friend back in my day, where I was in middle school, elementary school. For example, I used to prank call my my friends from elementary school and I didn't know that there's such thing as caller IDs and so I prank call my friends and they get really annoyed the parents would get really annoyed at me and they're like call me back they call me back and they're like Megan I know it's you I'm like how do you know it's me and they're like well we have caller ID I'm like what the heck is that and it's like I realized that it's just your name pops up when you call someone and this is back when we had like landlines and stuff. So I didn't know what caller ID was. And I also had a friend, a friend who um, was my neighbor. And she said something, she called me out on something on the bus and I slapped her across the face. And that was a really bad memory because she was like really angry at me. And I, instead of, Pro, pro, like being proactive and taking in what she's saying to me and and talking to her back about how I feel and what she what I'm thinking about. I, I slapped her across the face and that was rude of me. And that's what I mean by the little things that makes you a good friend. You know, you don't slap your friend. You don't prank call your friends and annoy them. Or I know these are little things that, as a kid growing up, I didn't know better. But um, things like stealing. I, I stole from my friend um, back when I was in elementary school. We, we found this toy from A Bug's Life. If you ever watched the movie A Bug's Life, you know what I'm talking about, the caterpillar, the fat caterpillar. We found a, a McDonald's toy and we hid it in a tree together. And I was like, yeah, let's go get it, let's go get it tomorrow out and see if it's still there. And we'll put it in this tree and Right after school, I took it home, I stole it, and I took it home with me, and I acted like it got lost <laughs> the next day when I saw her and I met up with her. And just little things like that, it, it's not very integrity-wise, it's not good. Um, but I've had friends who, in, the, in my elementary school days, middle school days, who didn't understand. I've had, I went to Claire's once, which is an accessory store for little girls. And I had a childhood friend named, um, I'm not gonna say names, actually. I had a childhood, I had a childhood friend and she would apologize profusely to every single stranger that walks by that when I had a tick. And 
I don't think she had any right to be apologetic because it's it's my threat, it's my condition, and she was apologizing for me, and she was embarrassed for me, and she was embarrassed to be around me. And that wasn't a fun experience because that's not what true friends do. They stick up for you, they, they're they proud of you, they, don't, they, don't, they want to be around you, they are by your side, they understand you, they're not embarrassed. And I know as children we don't know better, but as I grew older, I, I knew better how to be a good friend. Uh, I didn't know how to be a good friend until I was probably in high school or college. And that's the history of my social life. I've always been a social butterfly and making friends wasn't hard. It's just finding a good friend that stuck by you was hard. Um, I, have a, I personally have a friend from all the way from middle school and she stuck by me somehow, even during my times of rudeness and in etiquette skills and I don't know if that's a word in etiquette what do you do if you want to find a good friend and to really find someone who's gonna be your friend forever or to even meet up with people and to really be social like how do you do that when you have Tourette's when it's so hard and you want just want to hide behind the behind the closet no wait not closet, you just want to hide in your house. <laughs> My first advice is to never be afraid to meet new people. I know oftentimes people with Tourette's have so much tics or such embarrassing tics that is like socially awkward that they don't want to meet people at all. But it's not a good idea to stay home all the time and avoid people too. Um, and when you're blocking out bad people, you're also blocking out the potential good people that could be, that could appear in your life somehow and you're just blocking everyone out if you're blocking just specific people that are mean to you you're blocking out the good people too and so my second advice is to actually be a good friend yourself be someone who'd want who you'd want to be a friend to yourself like be someone who you'd be attracted to when it comes to friendships just be a good friend yourself. And that means, that can mean that you should work on your compassion or your understanding or your be more down to earth or more laid back or more accepting of other of others. And I my, my advice is to seek to understand before wanting to be understood. So seek to understand other people before being understood. I know it's hard to find good friends because of your Tourette's but the best thing you could do for yourself is to learn how to be a good person, how to be a good friend, and work in those characteristic traits that you think that is found in a good friend. Um, and my third advice is to never, ever beg someone to be in your life. If they want to be in your life, they will do it. There, If there's a will, there's a way. And when you beg someone to... <laughs> When you beg someone to be in your life, ow. When you beg someone to be in your life, it's sort of like you're disrespecting yourself because you, you're disrespecting yourself. You have no integrity. You just have, you just can't force someone to love you because forcing doesn't bring happiness. And when you beg someone, when you force someone to be with you, they push you away, they shut you down, they just avoid you, they run away. And it's not good to do that. You can't force someone to be your friend because if they really wanted to, you wouldn't even have to try, you know? And being a good friend yourself is the first step to finding a good friend. And I know it's super hard. Um, Tourette's makes it worse for you to find someone who could be your potential friend, but just let yourself be known. Go out there, meet new people, go on camps, like like group camps that they offer when you're in high school or or middle school or even college. They have they have disability camps. Um, I know they have one in Seattle called Do It program. And they have different camps and different meetups. Like go on meetup.com or the app meetup and find hobbies that you like that other people like and join them wherever they want to meet and do whether that's pick up soccer or art 
or socializing and having wine or going dancing. They have so many opportunities out there that you can meet new people. Don't coop yourself up in the house because that's not good for you. And so that's all for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. I post videos every Saturday at 9 Pacific Standard Time. Please subscribe below and follow me on Instagram, which is official Mini Crumpler. My name is Mini Crumpler. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.